Okay, welcome to our weekly or bi-weekly now. I'm still not used to saying that team call. Um, tonight we have a guest speaker, one of my dear friends who is a premier coach, Megan Siebel. And she is just such a kind human and just so hardworking and so dedicated to her business. And she is a busy mom. And she's going to give us some tips and training on time management. So make sure you take notes and I'm just going to pass it over to her. Hi everyone. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And time management is something that I was not good at in the beginning because I just didn't realize how important it was. I was focused on the vital behaviors and getting those done. Um, so I joined in 2015 when I had a two-year-old and I um, had more time to work my business. And it's funny because I work more now than I ever did. And I mean, I think we do that the more we, the longer we're here, it's like we, we just invest, we're invested more and more. But I could have done so much more in the beginning. And I wish that I would have known some of these tech, like these things that I'm going to share with you tonight in the beginning, because they would have made a huge difference. And even in 2017, when I, I had had my other baby and I really came back and really started being serious and treating my business as a business, you know, they say you have a join date and then you have a date where you decide you're going to actually go all in and build the business. And for me, that happened after I'd had my second son. Um, so I had a newborn and a three-year-old and I went all in and um, it took me a couple months to build my momentum back up, but I just immersed myself in personal development. I got on every, any team call I could get on all the national wake-up calls. Um, you know, I didn't announce to my coach that I was going to that I was going all in. I just made the decision and I told my husband and um, he didn't doubt me, but he said, do you know what the odds are of being like, you know, premier and like elite? And I said, yeah, I, I mean, no, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> like, watch me. I, I want to do it. I, I, this is what I, what I meant to do, what I need to do. So I learned over time, just very simple strategies. So the first thing that I want to talk about is having a time on Sunday set aside where you sit down with your calendar and you plan out not only your work hours, but your non-work hours. So I use highlighters and I use the Rise Up Journal, but you could use any planner. Before this, I used the Passion Planner because that's what Amy always used. Um, so I, I started out using the Passion Planner, but any planner will work. I like the Rise Up um, planner because, and I also like writing things down. I don't like to do the virtual stuff, even though I know we have the new virtual business activity tracker and it's awesome and I'm sure I'll get into the habit of using that but for planning I feel like having things on paper in a couple different places is really key so I sit down on Sundays and I you know turn on some good music I light a candle and I look at my week I write down the national wake-up call I write down my workouts um, I write down when I'm working and then I write down when I'm with my kids and I actually write down like what we're doing, like, okay, so Milo's preschool time is blocked out. And, you know, in between that, I have my power hours. Um, and so for me, what really helps is, um, is being able to see my whole week. So you want a planner where you can see just the week, just that week. So you're not overwhelmed. Um, and then if it's, if there's not room on there, I would have a separate calendar maybe that's just for your social media. So I actually look at my social media for the week. So I write out all my appointments, all the appointments for the kids. Um, you know, I run it by my husband and I say, you know, do you, are there any big things happening? Not really now. Cause it's like COVID time, but um, you know, are, are, is there, you know, something we're doing together? Or is there a date night when we used to go on dates, like schedule every, you schedule everything because when you write it down, you are more accountable and you're more committed and you're more organized, right? So you can get more done in less time when you're more organized. So I write everything down and then I write down and plan what my posts are gonna be or what my topics are gonna be for my social media. So you might not necessarily write it all out and, and craft all your posts, but you can decide what you're gonna be talking about, you know, Sunday through Saturday. And that way you're organized and you can even like, I've even gotten to the point where I'll write down my social media and I'll kind of think about like, okay, am I going to send a newsletter out this week? Can my newsletter somehow tie into my social media? You know, what's going on in my boot camp? What's our theme for this month? Like, do I want to kind of like 
share bits and pieces of that on my social because what that does is it gives value to people who aren't yet in your boot camp, but they're getting little bits and pieces here and there, right? So they're interested, they're watching you. So I try to do that. Um, I try to talk about coaching once a week. But I try to give a lot of value. I know reels are really fun. I know, you know, you guys, social media is fun, right? But um, having a plan is going to save you time during the week when you're busy with your kids and you don't have the time um, so that you, you know, maybe you do write your posts on Sunday. I've definitely had seasons where I write all my posts out. And, and sometimes that helps. I'm the note section on my phone and I'm like Monday and I just kind of craft out what I want to write. And maybe it's just kind of like a rough draft, but at least you have something to start with. So then on Monday when it's like, okay, I'm going to post my post, you have it all written and ready to go. Um, so that's really, really helpful, but having that week scheduled, having, I use, I use a highlighter. So like the pink is my work hours. So you can see like the stuff that's not highlighted, like that's where I'm teaching Milo for, you know, homeschool, preschool, all the pink is work hours. The very tip top is workouts. So that's another tip that I want to say is that I start my day with mindset and movement. So before I do anything else, um, and you can watch, I did a training for, um, for Amy, for the team set your soul on fire call. I think it was last, no, the week before last, and it, it, you can go watch it, but I share like what I do in the morning, my whole like belief, um, and, and mindset practice. So, but I do that. I do that before I do anything else. I pour into myself. I get up before my kids. I didn't always get up for, before my children, but I can tell you, even if you can carve out 15 minutes, so maybe you don't get your workout done before the kids wake up, but you can teach yourself and train yourself to wake up earlier, just like bit by bit by setting your alarm. And sometimes it'll take you months at a time. Like it took me probably three months to teach myself to get up at 4.30 a.m. I get up at 4.30, I wake up, I feel great, I'm not tired. I did it in 15 minute increments, you guys. So like after three weeks of waking up at you know 5.30, I push it back 15 minutes, 5.15 for three weeks. So it's like a month at a time, you know what I mean? So that is a, a tip that you can do. But I, if you can just 15 minutes, wake up to do, to read your vision, do some sort of morning mindset work, whether it's gratitude, to journal or doing your reading, drinking your energized, just getting ready, get your workout clothes on. That way when the kids get up, then you're doing your workout, maybe after breakfast, after they've eaten and they're playing, you're doing a workout or you do it at maybe morning nap time. I used to do that. So that's the thing. If you get your workout done before the morning nap time or before the morning you know, play time or wh whatever age your kids are, that's when you can do your power hour. So I schedule my power hour power hours during when my kids are playing with each other or when before Ben goes to work, like, and I asked him, I had to ask him, like, he's not going to, he says nothing is scheduled. I schedule everything. He doesn't, he doesn't schedule anything. I have to ask. Right. So if you're like, well, I don't even know, like if my husband, I don't want to bug him or I don't want to, the more organized you are with who you're living with kids included, everybody is happier. So like everybody knows that mommy like when they wake up, they come into my office. They know I'm in here. I just finished my workout or I'm working or whatever. They come in, we get up, we go do breakfast. And then they know after breakfast, they play and I come in and I get another hour of work done. So while before Ben leaves for work at nine and before Calvin starts school at nine, virtual school, and before I start preschool with Milo, I get work in from like 7.30 to 8.30. 845. And then if I'm really on a roll, I'll stay and I'll work right up until I have to stop to get them started with school or I'll stop and I'll take a shower and get dressed. It really just depends on what I need to do that day. Um, so yeah, so just thinking about your ideal morning before you try to orchestrate anything, think about what you want and then work on the bits and pieces that you can control. You can control what time you're waking up. You can control, you know, what you're getting done before you have to go do something with the kids. Because a lot of times as moms, I feel like we feel like we always have to be doing something with the kids. That's not actually true. Like even with babies, even with toddlers, like my kids are four and seven, almost going to be five and eight. So they're very different when they were toddlers. Yeah. They were crawling all over me, but I was sitting on the couch and they were crawling all over me. And I was doing 10 minutes of invites, you know, while they were crawling all over me and we were playing. So my power hours looked different. They were shorter and they were more condensed. So if you have kids that age, I would say like, Kate, I would say focus on getting that 
eating the frog first, right? The most important thing, like sending out your invites or starting those new conversations, do that first and just do power pockets. Like when the kids are climbing all over you and you're like, I, I can't, you know, hop on a zoom right now. I don't know if I can like write a post. No, that's why you write it on Sunday, but you can send out invites. If you write your invite, that's the other thing. If you write out your invite and like what you're inviting to, you know what you're saying. You're like, okay, I have an idea. Know what I'm, I know what I'm inviting to. And you write it out. So you have a rough draft of it. You can copy and paste it in and personalize it in those 10 minutes while things are crazy. You don't really have to, that doesn't take a lot of mental like you know, stuff. The thing that I have to do away from my children is follow-ups. I can't follow up with somebody or like read something or sign somebody up, like with my kids crawling. It's like, I'll get the name wrong. I did it today. I was like in the middle of teaching Milo. I saw a text message from some, and I thought it was somebody else. And I built the cart for somebody else's name, sent it to the girl. She changed it herself. Cause she's, she used to be my assistant. She changed it herself and like got signed up. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's why you don't multitask with that kind of stuff. But you can multitask with, the, sorry, 15 minutes till um, the superstar call. So that, that brings me to another tip, you guys. I put reminders on my phone for everything. The important team calls, the national wake-up call. Um, I don't set it in for my power hour because I'm, I'm now we're in a routine. But in the beginning, maybe you will want to set a reminder on your phone. Um, I set a reminder on my phone for things that aren't habits yet. So once they become a habit, and that's the other thing, you want to try to do things at a certain time every day. It's kind of like, like, like when you're teaching your baby, getting your baby on a schedule, you want to get yourself on like a business schedule. Like you're like a baby. You have to, if it'll be easier for you to get it done and you'll be more efficient if it's at the same time every day. So set up your power hours, set up your routine kind of at the same time every day. So it's like clockwork. And the more you do it, the more effortless it's going to be, the easier it gets. I mean, I get so much done now in a day and it's not because I'm, have any special skill set. It's literally because I've been doing it for so long a certain way. And my kids, like they just, they just, they just know, right. It's just like routine. So, um, so that definitely is, um, something that'll be helpful to do it at the same time every day reminders on your phone. So I use the daily planner, but I also have a wall calendar that's right here by my desk. So I write everything. I write all my calls, like my one-on-ones power hours, uh, training calls, things like that, that all goes on the wall calendar because I can easily glance at it at no matter where I am in my office and, and like see what's happening. Um, but I start with my daily planner, writing everything down, but not everything goes on the wall calendar, just the most important stuff that like I have to show up for, for the business. So I used to have it that my wall calendar was like family stuff was on there too. But honestly, um, when, when before COVID, when we had sports and stuff like that, it, it actually helped to have it on the refrigerator on like a whiteboard, right? And we just write it down for the week. We don't really have to do that anymore because we're not doing anything. But I think just a wall calendar for business is awesome. So I have that up there. And then on my wall calendar, this really helps me, is I write down coaches' names that I'm trying to help, like that have a goal of going Emerald this week, you know, so I can focus on them. Any new coaches that like need extra support, um, my personal goals, I write up here too. So like success club 10 for my husband's account, success club 20 for me this week. Like I write those goals down. So I'm looking at them every day. And that's something that I implemented on my wall calendar after seeing how much I liked seeing my goals in the rise up journal, like every week. Um, so I definitely, I definitely would do that. Um, Okay, let me see. Are there any questions so far about anything or anything specific that you're struggling with? Um, yeah, power pockets are life when your kids are little. It's it's really, I mean, it's really great. Um, thanks. I like reels. They're fun. I was going to do one today. Um, yeah, you guys. So that's th those are the basics. Like that's how I get it done. Um, I would work all day, every day. That's the kind of like work ethic I have. I'm a little bit of a workaholic like my dad. However, having the unscheduled work hours where I'm like, now I'm going to focus on my kids and like, just be with my kids. I can put my phone down. I know I like got what I needed to get done is also really helpful because then you don't always have to feel like you have, we don't have to work 24 seven. We don't, we do have to work 
efficiently and we do have to put in you're going to be putting in more hours in the beginning than you what you feel like maybe you need to if that makes sense like you are going to work you want to you want to build a big business you have to work hard but you don't have to work all day and it shouldn't be to the point where you're like not having fun so being a little bit more organized i mean i'm just anal about it and it just i don't know i i just it helps me. It really helps. It really makes a difference because for a very long time, I used the excuse of being a mom as why I couldn't build a big business. And for a really long time on Meredith's team, I was the only mom. And then Moira joined and then Moira signed up all these moms. And I'm like, wait a second, she's a mom. Well, she's just, she's Moira. But then she signed up all these other women who were hitting high SC numbers. And I'm like, well, they're all moms. I mean, <sighs> Like I can do this, I guess, too. And, um, and that's really when I started believing that I could. So another part of it is just to believe that you do have time. We do have time. We absolutely do. And if I don't get enough done during the day, I know I've got two hours at night instead of Netflixing and watching whatever show with my husband, I can get some work done if I need to. I generally don't have to work at night anymore. And I really enjoy that. If I do get on Instagram, I'm, I'm on it for me. I'm finding some new accounts that are inspiring. I'm watching funny dog reels. Like it's not, I'm not working. Um, but when I'm on social media during the day, I am working. I am not on there to get inspired or content ideas. Like you have to be the master of your own time. And the way that you do that is to take time on Sunday to get ready for the week. And, um, cause if you're failing to plan your or whatever the thing is, like you're planning to fail, right? You're failing to plan, you plan to fail. And that's true. So um, what else, what else? Not, so not, so being organized, yes. Being a busy mom, yes. But also at the same time, like it's okay if not all days are gonna go as scheduled or as planned. Like kids get sick, kids go through phases where they need you more and that's okay. As long as you know that a, you've got your time at some point during the day, which is why I wake up early so that you mentally can handle everything. And B, you know, that at the bare minimum, you can fit in 30 minutes, 10 minutes to invite 10 minutes, to follow up 10 minutes to start new conversations and follow accounts. Like you can do the bare minimum just to keep the needle moving forward. Um, I don't, do I take a day off ever? Like I take Sundays to plan. I don't really invite on the weekends anymore. I used to, um, but because I'm efficient and because I can get more done during the week, I've shifted to where I work more hours during the week. So I can take more time on the weekends. I always check my messages still, you know, I do talk I'm, I'm social on social media over the weekends for sure. I'm just not like, like sending out invites, you know, and inviting on the weekends. I, I, for me, I needed to have that break. Otherwise I would just work all the time and I was getting burnt out. So having scheduling in those non-work hours, scheduling in fun, like finding time for things that like, if you like to love to go out and hike, or for me, it's stand up paddle boarding, it's hiking, it's just walking my dog as simple as that. Like you have to schedule that in too, because that's just as important as doing your business activity tracker. Um, because if we're not being truly ourselves, having fun and living life to the fullest, like we're not going to be great coaches. We're not going to be happy moms. Like it's just not, it's pointless. So making time to have fun too is important. Um, what else you guys, anybody have any questions? What would be your biggest tip for organization as a new coach from like the get-go? If somebody's brand new and just getting started versus like running around yeah. with the chicken. I, I would, uh, I would help new coaches find one hour a day, keep them countable, say like, what, when are you going to do your power hour? Like what, when are you working? Um, and then, I mean, I host power hours for my team, like throughout the week at the same time every week. So I like to have new coaches, like hop on a power hour, um, so they can learn how to do a power hour for me and learn how to work the business. But it's as simple as that. It's just finding the time, right? Finding the time for your workout, finding the time where you're going to do your business, daily vital behaviors, and, and then making time to get on the team calls, I think is really powerful and really important for new coaches for anybody really, because it keeps us connected. And what if somebody just says, well, I'm just not a morning person. I am this, I'm like struggling to get back on the early mornings, but I know other people who are just like, you know, I can't wake up that early. I'm yeah. just not a morning person. I'm a night uh, out. I was literally up till like 1 a.m. last night. 
be, I couldn't stay up till 1 a.m. and get up at 4.30. It just wouldn't happen. Um, you, you probably, your circadian rhythm is just at a point where you're used to staying up late or you like to stay up late. You might have more creativity in the evenings. I know a lot of musicians are like this. I forget what it's called, but they, they're more creative in the, at night. Um, I'm, a, I'm not a musician. I'm a writer. I'm all, I was also an actress and it was hard for me to stay up late with shows. Cause I still got up early. Like I just innately like to wake up early. That's when I feel most creative. That's when I write, that's when things come to me. So for that, I would say if you're not going to wake up super early to get your stuff done, you're going to need to find time somewhere in your morning routine, either during morning nap time where, you know, it's quiet or if your kids go to school, like maybe your morning routine happens when kids, after the kids go to school, like it just has to happen at some point. Um, I don't think that it would be, you know, it's, it's not in your best interest to try and change who you are, but I think that you could try going to bed earlier and sort of slowly shifting your circadian rhythms to where you feel like, because when you go to bed at one, what time do you wake up? Do you naturally want to wake up after seven or eight hours? Um, I could sleep for like 10 hours. He wakes up at 530 and then gets okay. in bed with me until about like seven and then seven. He's up between 630 or seven. But I think my thing right now is he gets to bed and then I'm like, oh, I can work. And then I just want to, after I finish working, I just want to like veg out. Yeah. And I have a hard time shutting off. Shutting down. Yeah. Um, but I do want to, like Amber and I have talked about this. <laughs> We like, she, I, we're both night owls. She's better at being a morning person. She gets up anyways. I'm not, I'm like trying to get back to it. Yeah. Um, I think your body is used to staying up late and sleeping in. It's not an easy shift, but I mean, think that you can shift in that direction. Yeah. Because are you, I mean, I, it's understandable. You should have time to wind down, but if I stay up late and I reach a certain point, like at some, when we're at summit, I don't sleep because we're like around people and there's talking and like, I don't sleep. I don't eat. I'm lucky if I remember to drink my Shakeology. I'm just like, so you're probably just, you're, you're working and then you want to stay up to relax. I, I think that a lot of people feel that, yeah. that way. So what if you, but I think I would be more productive. What if you were more morning. productive during I the think, day? I know that. You don't necessarily have to get up at 4.30 like yeah. me. What if you got up, if he gets up at 5.30, what if you just got up at five, you know, yeah. or 5.15 and have 15 mm -hmm. minutes to do meditation, vision, reading or something. Um, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. What do you feel like you need most right now? What is missing for you? structure I mean we're slightly getting back to structure like teething and all of these things and he was we sleep trained and he was like in his bed and yeah. now he comes in bed I mean, he sleeps most hey, of the night you're, in the, his bed. you're in the trenches and then, it's like you I'm I'm not gonna lie it's the hard it's hard right now it's really hard you're not gonna get a ton of sleep like that's just it's you're you're on survival mode but, but going to bed earlier <laughs> is gonna give you more time to sleep but I understand that like late at night, that's the only time when he's sleeping that you can just be you and you want yeah. those hours. So I think you either choose to have it late or you choose, I mean, I choose to have it early in the morning. My husband does not get up as early as me. The dog is still asleep. Dog gets up on the bed into my spot as I roll out. Like, I just think that we have to pick and choose as moms yeah. when we're going to get our me time in. So I don't think it necessarily has to be, but what if you could somehow try the, the thing we talked about tonight to get, be more efficient during the day. So you didn't have mm -hmm. to stay up so late to get you time. Maybe you don't yeah. have to work at night after he goes to bed. Don't work. Like try mm -hmm. to get done during the day. That's so such a weird. Yeah. And I do definitely do power pockets. It's just, yeah. and I think I could do it in the morning. I think I could wake up like I do want to, and I do feel more creative first thing. It's just like, I think it is just switching that circadian rhythm over to that. Well, yeah, you're just, you're, I mean, you're in sync with him too. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're going to do what he needs and he needs you to get him at five 30 in the morning. So, you know, you know, like, I think there's a party that knows that if you don't stay up late and get your you time, you're not really going to get much you time and you deserve yeah. some you time. He just wants to snuggle for an hour or two in the morning, which is sweet. And part of me is like, I want to snuggle, but I also want to work. So Can you work like in bed? Do you go back to sleep? I do sometimes go back to sleep and then, but I could work in bed. It's just hard prop for me. Yourself, prop yourself up. Is he like in your armpit? My kids used to sleep in my armpit yeah. right there. 
right there because they can smell you and it's like it's so weird but that's mm. where they like to sleep yeah I would prop myself up keep him here and I would get on your phone and I would do I mean maybe if you could teach yourself to wake up before 5 30 where you do your meditation and your vision so you've done your mindset work and then you get him maybe you get some tea or something you get back into bed he'll fall back to sleep and then you could do like a Whatever. morning power hour yeah. right there I mean yeah. if you go to bed at, at by 11 30 you'll get yeah. enough to be able to do that that's what yeah. I would do that sounds perfect actually yeah. I love this I got a customized schedule <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. But girl, you know, like I'm telling you, it gets easier. It really does. It gets so much easier. Um, they they're but there's it's enjoy every second because they won't want to sleep in your armpit forever. And it is so <laughs> it is so sweet. It is. He is very it's sweet. Well, thank you, Megan. We took You're up welcome. 30 minutes. That was amazing. And I am so stoked. I took a page full of notes and I'm excited to speak on your call tomorrow. Nice. So thank you so much for coming on and having us. And we will hop over to the superstar call now. Sounds good. Bye girls.